First up, we have one of our signature Hub Week content modules called View of the Future. We, early, we had one earlier this morning that was the future around smart cities. And this one is probably something that you may not expect. A poet, in fact. Simone John is going to come on stage and read for you. Simone. Thanks. Thanks so much for that intro, Kathleen. Um, so I'm going to be reading from my poetry collection called Testify, which came out this past summer. And Testify is a collection of documentary poems that look at state-sanctioned violence against black people, against people of color, and against queer people. And while this collection focuses mainly on Trayvon Martin and Sandra Bland, two black people who died within the past few years, for me, as a Bostonian, this collection is firmly of and situated within Boston, and so I appreciate the opportunity to read from that for you today. And so we're going to read a few poems. The first is a haiku, and it's called Elegy for Dead Black Women Number One. The first death comes by bullet. The second, when they've forgotten your name. This next poem, the first two lines come from Rachel Jantel's testimony in the Trayvon Martin trial, and it's called Order of Events. We started talking about the All-Star game, him telling me to go check for him if it's on. It wasn't. The game started at 7.30 p.m. In perfect pitch, Mary J. Blige asked, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? The crowd clapped in response. Neo closed the halftime show. For all we know, we might not get tomorrow. Let's do it tonight. But the call dropped at 7.16. Then, sirens. Windows washed in red light. Occupants peering through parted curtains. Watching EMTs lift the limp wrist of a stranger in the street. Elsewhere, brown boys sat around the screen waiting for the game to begin. This next poem is called A Brief History of Murder, and it's written after a poem by a poet named Kazumi Chin. The last black girl they killed wore beads in her hair on picture day. Her name is swallowed instead of spoken, her hashtag trending until they kill the next black boy. The next black girl they'll kill is writing this poem. The first black boy they killed was neither black nor boy, seen as some rare breed of African wildlife to be captured, to be carried across the Atlantic, to be sacrificed to the sea when his body broke in the belly of the ship. The first black boy they killed had a mother. The last black boy they killed had a mother too, she is crying into the camera, sitting on stage with a sorority of sunless women. They welcome her to the club. She didn't ask to join. Daily, my mother prays not to join. I don't believe in her God, but my poems pray too in the way poems do. The next black boy they'll kill is sitting in my classroom, passing notes to the pretty girl who always does her work. The next black boy they'll kill is my older or younger brother, my cousin. The next black girl they'll kill is driving with the windows down, obeying traffic laws, listening to a man on the radio talk about the last black boy, trying to get home while she is still whole, trying not to flinch at the sound of sirens. This poem is called Morning Rites, or How to Bury Your Son. Gather his sneakers from each corner of the house. Bury them at the basketball court. Cut the net from the rim and place it in your purse. When the sound of jays on concrete makes a sob crawl up your throat, finger the nylon like prayer beads. Recite his middle name until it sounds like a chant. When his favorite cereal goes on sale, buy a box for every song you'll never dance to at his wedding. 
On Sundays, listen to the voicemails he left you like hymnals. Fold his unfinished homework into a paper plane. Carry it in your wallet until receipts rub math problems to dust. Start collecting souvenir bibs for children who will never call you grandma. Did you expect them to understand what it means to be a one-woman jazz funeral, to sway to a brass band that no one else can hear? They have never known what to make of your mourning. This last poem comes from the section of the book that deals with Sandra Bland, and for that section, I excerpted poems from the transcript of the dash cam interaction between Sandra Bland and Officer Insignian. So I will give Sandra Bland the last word. The title of this poem is Unanswered Questions, and these are all of the poems that she asked in that interaction, excerpted in an order. When are you gonna let me go? I'm in my car, why do I have to put out my cigarette? Why am I, am I getting removed for a failure to signal? Okay, so you're going to yank me out of my car. I'm under arrest, for what? Why am I being apprehended? So you're threatening to drag me out of my own car? You're doing all this for a failure to signal? You feeling good about yourself? You feel real good about yourself, don't you? Why am I being arrested? Why can't you, why am I being arrested? Why can't you tell me that part? Why won't you tell me what's going on? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? You want me to sit down now? Or are you going to throw me on the floor? Would that make you feel better about yourself? I'm getting a warning. For what? For what? Do I feel like I have anything on me that's illegal? You're about to break my wrist. Can you stop? Don't it make you feel good, Officer Insania? Don't it make you feel real good? Thank you. Simone, that was amazing. What I want to know from you is, what made you become a poet? When did you know you wanted to be a poet? That's a great question. Um, I was lucky enough to go to a school where I was allowed to define my own major, so I originally started out looking at anthropology as a topic that I wanted to explore, but eventually realized that poetry, you know, that saying, a poetic license that you're usually invoked when you're doing something that's kind of breaking a mold or doing something out of the ordinary, and I felt like poetry was expansive enough to allow me to look at some of the same things that I was looking at in anthropology as well as other modalities and other ways of entering the conversation through art. So I was really fortunate to come upon it during my schooling. And I don't know that much about the world of poetry, so what, um, what does success look like as a poet? Like, what are you striving to become? Yeah, it's really interesting. I think that a lot of people who go through school to study creative writing, so getting the, the Master of Fine Arts degree, oftentimes the career path that you end up in is teaching, so that's definitely something that poets do. I think publishing is one marker of success, so trying to get published and trying to get in front of people and get your, your words in front of people, but it can look like a lot of different things. I think you taught us a lot today, so mm. I, I want to thank you very warmly. It was wonderful to have thank you. Thank you so much, Kathleen. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks.